Hey everyone, this video we're going to be adding ledges and also the functionality of jumping over ledges. So let's add our ledges to a tile map because I want to be able to auto tile our ledges. So let's go to town, control A, and then let's create a new tile map node. Let's drag it up after the overworld tile map because we want the ledges to be rendered over the grass tiles. And once we click on tile map, let's rename it to be ledge tile map. And also in the cell drop down, let's make sure to set this to be 16 by 16. And let's create a new tile set. Click on it and click plus and let's find our ledge tile set right here. I'm going to zoom in into the picture and let's create a new auto tile. Let's select the region. It's just these three tiles. And let's expand the selected tile. And the name of this, we'll just say ledge auto tile. And we want to add auto tiling, right? So we go to the bit mask tab and we want to set the bit mask mode to be three by three. Now for the bit mask, say we want to draw the middle tile right here. So to select the current tile, we select the middle bit and this middle tile is only drawn if the left tile and the right tile are drawn next to it. So we just click in those adjacent tiles right there. And for the left tile, we select it by selecting the middle one. And this is only drawn if it's next to a middle tile. So we'll select that as well. And it's symmetrical on the right side and we select it like this. So it's just a straight line in the middle. We also want to give this ledge collision. So let's go to the collision tab. Let me just drag this up so you guys can see better. And let's click on the rectangle shape and select the tile. And we're adding collision shapes to our tile. So we'll add it to all three. And that looks good. Control S to save. And let's add in our tile map or the ledges in our tile map. So click on the ledge tile map, select the ledge auto tile, and I will draw it in here. Great. Control S to save. And let's Try playing this. Let's see how it works. So we're blocked on this side, which is good because we can't jump up the ledge. But, and let's go to the side. We can't walk on the side as well. And let's see if we can jump down. Well, we can't jump down because we haven't implemented that logic yet. Right now, it just treats the ledge as a collision shape and we're blocked on all sides. So we want to be able to jump down this ledge on this side and jump two tiles down. And let's go ahead and implement that. Let's first add in different collision layers so we can differentiate the ledge from other objects like a tree or the water tile set. And we can do that by going to project and project settings. Let's scroll down to layer names and then under 2D physics. And we can create different layers. So the first layer will create player. This is for our player and another layer we can call world. So this can include the tree, the water tile set and other objects in the world and another layer called ledge. And this is a special layer where we're able to use this to indicate when we should jump or not. So let's click close. Now we have to assign all of our different nodes to the correct collision layer. So we can first start off with the tree node. Control Shift O to quick open a scene and then let's select tree. And then within the tree node, you can notice that there is a collision field and it contains layer and mask. So layer means what collision layer is the current node on. So the tree is on the world layer, not the player layer. We'll select world and mask is what layers does it look towards. And we can set this to be none because we'll have the player look towards the tree for collision. And that looks good. And let's go to the water tile set, right? Because water also has collision. And we can add that by selecting the overworld tile map and finding the collision field right here. So this would be under the world layer as well. And it's looking at nothing because the player would be looking towards this for collision. Great. So we finished the 
trees and the water. And let's go to the ledge tile map. Open up collision. And this is on the ledge layer. And it's also looking towards nothing. The player would look towards this ledge. So we don't have to specify here. Now let's go to our player scene. Player scene. And when we select the kinematic body 2D node, we have the collision field here. So it's currently on the player layer, which is good. And the mask, it looks towards world and ledge. We also have to set the collision mask for the Raycast 2D. So we have a Raycast 2D here, right? And currently it's a collision mask. So mask is what layers it looks towards. So it's looking towards world and ledge. And we want this Raycast to look for any tiles that would block it. So we can have this Raycast just for the blocking purposes. And we can call it Blocking Raycast 2D. And let's create another Raycast. And in this Raycast, we can look towards tiles that we can jump over. So a ledge. And this collision mask is only looking for ledges. Take a note that both the Raycasts look towards ledge. And that's because the ledge can also block the player. So if they're going at it in the wrong direction, it'll be blocking. Or it could allow the player to jump. Now we have to update our script to reflect these new Raycasts. So first, I'm going to add a jump speed. So we can change it whenever we want. But I'll keep it at 4.0 to start off with. And I need to update this Raycast here. So it's, I renamed it to be Blocking Raycast. And let's create a new Raycast, ledge underscore Ray. And I can get access to that. Now that we have these two Raycast, I also want to create a flag called jumping over ledge. And this is a Boolean, so it's a flag whether or not the player is currently jumping over a ledge or not. Initialize it to be false. Now we have to go to our move function and update some logic. So up here, let's first update our ledge ray. So ledge ray cast two, and we'll do the same thing as what we did for our blocking ray cast, desired step. And let's make sure to update it. Force ray cast update. Now let's add another if case. So if ledge underscore ray is colliding, and also we wanna make sure that it's in the down direction. So if the player is going downwards, then they can jump over because currently I have my ledge tile set in the downwards direction. And later on, I'll modify this code so it can support any direction. And input direction is equal to, so down would be when y is one. This condition is whether we're able to jump or not. And also I'm gonna do an or and jumping over ledge. Either the player is already jumping or they are able to jump. Then we go to this if case. And let me change this to be else if. Now up here, Let's update the percent moved to next tile and then replace walk speed with jump speed. And let's check if the player has moved more than two tiles because with jump, we want to cover a distance of two tiles instead of one. So percent moved to next tile, if it's greater than or equal to 2.0, so two tiles in total, then they have completed the jump. So let's make sure to update our position to be initial position plus input direction times tile size times two. So this makes sure that they have moved two tiles and we update the position accordingly. And we'll set the percent move to next tile back to zero, is moving back to false, and jumping over ledge back to false as well. Else, we want to set jumping over ledge to true. And we need to update the Y position of the player. I modeled the Y position of the player through a math equation. I have an input variable. I call this input direction dot Y 
times tile size times percent moved to next tile. So I use this as an input because right now this equation is linear. If I just use this equation as the y position, then the player will just move straight down in a constant manner, which is not what we want. We want some sort of curve. And the way I did this is by setting position.y, initial position.y plus So this is an equation that I got through trial and error by plotting points on a graph and trying to get the curve that I want for the player jump. So you guys can modify these values or try a different equation and see if it works better. But with that done, let's try playing this and let's see if we can jump over our ledge. Great, we can jump over our ledge. Now let's add a shadow to our player while he's jumping over our, the ledge. Let's close this. Let's add a new node to our player, Control A, and let's add a sprite node. I'll drag this up all the way and I'll rename this to be shadow. And let's go to our file browser and look for player folder and player shadow. And I'll add this to texture. And go to offset and click off centered. Now let's go back to the player script, scroll all the way up. Let's get access to our shadow on ready bar, shadow, and dollar sign and shadow. And let's go to the ready function. To start off with, we want the shadow to be invisible. So we'll do shadow dot visible false. And we only want the shadow to be visible while we're jumping. So let's go to the move function. And we're jumping in this else case. So shadow dot visible is true. And we want to set it back to false when we're done jumping. So right here, false. Let's click play and let's check this out. Great, we have a shadow now. And one last thing, I want to add some dust effect whenever the player lands. So let's close out of this. Let's create an animated sprite. So let's click plus, other node, and animated sprite. Let's rename this to be landing dust effect. And I'll save this. And then within frames, I'll create new sprite frames. Click on it, and let's add our dust images. So right here under the player folder, I have jump landing dust and there's only three images. So I'll select horizontal to be three and vertical to be one. Select all frames, add three of them. And I'm going to add a script to this. In the ready function, I'll set frame to be zero to ensure that it starts from the beginning. And whenever it gets ready, I want playing to be true. And also, I want this scene to be deleted when it's done playing. So I'll select landing dust effect, go to the node tab, and the animation finish signal will do the trick. I'll connect to the script. And here, I'll just do Q underscore free. So it deletes itself once it's done its animation. And when I'm looking at this, this is actually really similar to the grass effect scene that we have. And later on, I can probably refactor this to use the same scene and instance off of it instead of creating another scene that's kind of identical, right? Because the script is pretty much the same. So later on, I'll do that refactor. But for now, we'll keep it as is. And before I leave this scene, let me make sure that the centered is ticked off. So it's covering a tile. Control S to save. And now let's go to our player script and let's get access to the scene that we just created. So I'll do const and then this is landing dust effect equals preload. And let's drag in the scene. Landing dust effect scene right here. Great. Now we have access to it. And let's go to the move function. And we want to call the dust effect whenever we finished 
jumping. So that would be under this if case, if percent moved is greater than or equal to two tiles. And in this if case, let's create the dust effect. So var dust effect, landing dust effect dot instance. And I want to make sure that the position is set to the player's position. And we want to add this node into the current scene. Add child and we'll pass in dust effect. And it will delete itself once the animation is finished. So we don't have to worry about deleting it out here. Now let's click play. Great, so we have the dust effect showing when the player is finished jumping. And it gives that feeling of jumping over something. And we're blocked from this side. And yeah, looks good. Thanks for watching and take care.